Welcome everybody to today's webinar, Working with Antigen-Specific T-Cells, Solutions for Immune Oncology and more by Miltony Biotech. After a brief introduction about our company and some basics about antigen-specific T-Cells, you'll learn in the next hour about products and solutions that simplify the work with rare antigen-specific T-Cells. Furthermore, I'll give you some examples how our solutions were successfully applied in experimental workflows. Enjoy! Part 1. Introduction. So, let's begin with a brief presentation of our company, Miltony Biotech. Miltony Biotech was founded in 1989 by Stefan Miltony and is the largest owner-managed company in Germany. We have two main sites in Germany, one in Bergisch Gladbach as headquarters and another one in Tetero, where the GMP manufacturing facility is located. Furthermore, we have subsidiaries in 28 countries and also distribute to 73 additional countries. Currently, we employ over 2,000 employees worldwide. Our mission is to serve the needs in life science research and to translate new scientific findings into clinical applications. Let's have first a look on how we at Milton Biotech define antigen-specific T-cells. Of course, all T-cells are antigen-specific. However, that term hereby is applied to T-cells that were activated prior to analysis via their cognate antigen, for example via a peptide, and not via an artificial polyclonal stimulus such as CD3 and CD28 engagement via, for example, activation beads. Hereby, only T-cells of a given specificity are activated and clonally expand. The initial frequency of a T-cell of a certain specificity is, however, very low. Analysis of antigen-activated T-cells is important to understand the very basics of the immune response and plays a pivotal role in tumor immunology, autoimmunity research, allergology, vaccine development, pharmacological screenings, diagnostics and also immunomonitoring. A little more detailed look is depicted here on the right side. Upon antigen-specific activation, T-cells <coughs> clonally expand, upregulate activation markers and release cytokines. Thus, assessment of those markers and cytokines, as well as the proliferation, are a valuable tool for the analysis of antigen-activated T-cells. Some molecules are of outstanding importance when it comes to T-cell activation and serve as good activation indicators. A widely used activation marker for CD4 plus and CD8 plus T-cells is CD69. It is one of the earliest markers expressed on activated T-cells 3 to 15 hours after stimulation, but also on B-cells and NK-cells, but not on resting lymphocytes. However, as CD69 background expression is also found in variable amounts on non-stimulated T-cells as well as on other cell types, analysis of CD69 expression alone may strongly overestimate the frequency of antigen-specifically activated T-cells. In combination with other early activation markers or cytokine expression, however, Analysis of CD69 co-expression as a second parameter is indeed a useful tool to increase the sensitivity and optical discrimination of rare cells in flow cytometry data. Similarly, upregulated upon T-cell activation via TCR signaling, but with different kinetics than CD69, is the activation marker CD25. CD25 is the alpha chain of the IL-2 receptor and is upregulated a little later than CD69, being detectable around 24 to 48 hours after TCR ligation. CD25 expression remains high up to 7 days, starts then to go down and finally is back to baseline around 11 days after stimulation. Another well-described and important activation marker with high specificity is CD137, also known as 41BB, a member of the TNF receptor superfamily, which has been shown to be expressed on antigen-activated CD4 plus and CD8 plus T cells 16 to 24 hours after stimulation. 
In this context, CD137 has been recently described to be a suitable marker for antigen-specific activation of human CD8 plus T cells, since it is not expressed on resting CD8 plus T cells. As a co-stimulatory molecule, CD137 is involved in the activation of su and survival of both T cells and NK cells. Interestingly, CD137 can also be used as a marker for antigen activated T regulatory cells within a very specific time window of about 4 to 6 hours after activation, as described by Bacher et al. several times in 2013 and 2014. Thereby, antigen activated T Rex exhibit much faster CD137 kinetics than conventional T cells and can consequently be easily discriminated. For CD4 plus T cells, CD154, also known as CD4 D ligand, a member of the TNF superfamily, has been shown to be a reliable functional marker for the detection of antigen activated T cells. As the central mediator of T cell help, CD154 is expressed by almost all functional activated CD4 plus T cells, irrespective of their subtype, but also by a small subset of CD8 plus T cells. Another technically important feature of CD155 is its extremely low ex vivo background expression, which allows a highly specific detection of antigen induced CD154 expression. As its upregulation occurs fast, about 4 to 12 hours after antigen encounter, its detection can easily be combined with staining for cytokines and phenotypic markers. Furthermore, cytokines round off the complete picture of T cell activation. The expression is mostly confined to TCR activated T cells and it is transient, typically measured within 4 to 12 hours after stimulation. Cytokines can be detected in cell culture supernatants or on an individual cell level either intracellularly or on the cell surface via, for example, our cytokine secretion assays. Most cytokines are restricted to a certain T cell subset and thereby ideal for the enrichment of highly specialized T cells, for example, virus specific interferon gamma secreting T cells for adoptive T cell therapy. Secreted cytokines such as interferon gamma and TNF alpha, as well as several interleukins, can give a good insight of the activation status of a T cell, as well as the specific function of the activated subset. Looking at the cytokine profile of activated T cells is thereby a hallmark of functional T cell studies. Generally, Analysis methods for antigen-specific T cells can be classified in two categories. First, the direct analysis methods. Labeling of the specific TCR using recombinant MHC peptide multimeres identifies specific T cells directly according to the specific antigen receptor without restriction to a certain functional parameter. Hereby, most class 1 MHC peptide multimeres are widely used to quantify and characterize antigen-specific CD8 plus T cell responses. The construction of class II multimeres, on the other hand, is more difficult due to the differences of the MHC class II structure and the TCR affinity. However, recently, a variety of MHC class II multimeres for the specific recognition of CD4 plus T cells has been generated. In addition, CD1 tetramers for the detection of lipid reactive T cells, including NK T cells, have been developed. Still, the method is frequently applied to CD8 plus T cells and lacks somewhat CD4 plus T cells applicability. However, the major limitation of the tetramer technology is that, that the antigenic epitope has to be characterized in detail. That is, a defined peptide restricted to a particular MHC haplotype. Second, the indirect analysis methods. This category employs functional parameters such as the expression of aforementioned activation markers and cytokines, but also cytotoxicity and proliferation as an indirect readout for T cells, which react to a specific antigen challenge. 
The detection of antigen-specific T cells by functional parameters requires the prior in vitro stimulation with the specific antigen. For stimulation, single peptides, peptide pools, proteins or whole antigen lysates can be used, covering thereby all possible T-cell epitopes. The advantage of activation-dependent methods is that they are independent of MHC alleles and or exact definition of the antigenic epitopes. However, the assays depend on the presence of a sufficient number of functional antigen-presenting cells and per definition exclude energic T-cells from the analysis. Most importantly, the biggest advantage here it is, all relevant information can be obtained using flow cytometry based assays and selective markers allow for additional cell isolation and enrichment. In the following presentation, we will specifically and especially have a look at the indirect analysis methods for antigen specific T cells to have a complete view on the functional characteristics of these interesting cells. However, as advanced the different approaches for the analysis of antigen-specific T-cells are, there are quite some challenges that need to be faced. The most difficult challenge, of course, is the rarity of the T-cells of a given specificity. Depending on the individual experience of the donor, as well as the antigen itself, frequencies vary between 0.1% to 0.001% of the whole T-cell population. In addition to that, sometimes those rare cells are difficult to isolate, for example from tissue. As mentioned before, depending on the T-cell subtype that is to be analyzed, the methods may differ and it needs to be determined which cytokine and marker one wants to actually look at. Here again, the specific circumstances and goals need to be taken into consideration. In the following slides, we will have a closer look at these challenges, learn about individual experimental solutions and have examples for successful applications. In the end, it is indeed like finding the needle in the haystack. As outlined before, the frequency of antigen-specific T-cells can vary depending on the circumstances and is one of the biggest challenges for analysis. All the more, it is important to optimally prepare the starting material without losing precious cells. Furthermore, only a low background enables to efficiently find the desired cell population, as it helps to drastically increase sensitivity in detection. Of course, specific labeling, no matter if for cell enrichment or flow analysis, is essential for, to lower the background. To efficiently isolate, detect and analyze antigen-specific T-cells, an optimized procedure during every step of the workflow is essential. Miltony Biotech combines different technologies over the whole workflow to maximize success when working with antigen-specific T-cells. Efficient yet, sam yet gentle sam sample preparation with the Gentlemax dissociators and dedicated tissue dissociation kits various max cell separation solutions for the enrichment of target cells, streamlined and optimized protocols to handle cells with care, fast and gentle with minimal cell loss. For the antigen-specific stimulation, we offer highly efficient peptivator peptide pools. For cell analysis, the reaffinity recombinant antibodies guarantee lowest background and highest specificity. And finally, the MaxQuant tie to cell sorter allows for most gentle sorting and highest viability due to the unique microchip based cell sorting technology. Pre enrichment of target cells is for sure a very valuable tool and a promising approach for the successful analysis of rare antigen specific T cells. However, the whole workflow, of course, should be optimized and the right product combination is the key. Talking about the workflow, here you see an overview of Miltini's antigen-specific T-cell workflow for human samples. The cells are prepared either in a PBMC cell complex, including APCs, or in a different setting for, for example, tissue. Then the antigen stimulation occurs via peptide um, pools and the antigen-specific T-cells are activated. The rare antigen-specific T-cells are then enriched according to activation markers such as CD137 and CD154 to be then further assessed and analyzed. 
Let's now move on to the different highlight products of the antigen-specific T-cell workflow. Part 2. Products and Solutions A successful experimental workflow starts with efficient sample preparation. The most widely used source for antigen-specific T-cells are PBMCs. They contain both the antigen-specific T-cells as well as the antigen-presenting cells and thereby provide a functional immunolog immunological context for the analysis of antigen-activated T-cells. Usually, PBMCs are prepared via density gradient centrifugation. However, when working with, for example, compromised or very small samples, density gradient centrifugation can be very tedious and inefficient. With the PBMC isolation kit, small blood, blood volumes ranging from 1 to 10 ml can be easily processed within 25 minutes to obtain highly pure PBMCs with a high recovery, even from difficult samples. So the kit eliminates user-dependent inconsistencies and performs reliably for every separation and therefore is ideal for small samples with where every cell counts. Under certain disease conditions, however, infiltrating antigen-specific T-cells might be of interest and have to be recovered from solid tissue such as tumors. In this step, valuable cells can be easily lost due to inefficient tissue dissociation or harsh digestion conditions. Our hallmark product in sample preparation is the Gentle Max Tissue Dissociator. The Gentle di uh, Dissociation preserves cell epitopes and recovers efficiently precious immune cells, even from hard to process tissue samples. Being programmable and fast with up to 8 samples in parallel, the performance is highly reproducible. The perfect addition to the Gentle Max are our tissue dissociation kits. They combine enzymatic treatment with the Gentle Max mechanical dissociation. Thereby, T cells can be isolated with ease from different tissue with maximum efficiency. So go for high yield, best reproducibility, and most gentle dissociation and preservation of epitopes for optimal recovery of rare cells. Now, after preparing the target cells, for example the PBMC, the next steps in the antigen-specific T-cell workflow is the antigen stimulation of the T-cells. Hereby, the most efficient stimulation of antigen-specific T-cells is achieved reliably with our peptivator peptide pools. This extensive panel of tumor, virus, fungi or microbiota-specific antigen consists of 50 mer peptides with 11 amino acid overlaps, covering the complete sequence of the respective antigen. The peptide composition ensures the optimal stimulation of both CD4 and CD8 plus T-cells. Moreover, Milton peptivators are water soluble and do not have to be diluted in harmful DMSO. With the peptivators HT, a high throughput version in a convenient 69 well format, high throughput ap um, applications are easily performed. As listed here, the many specificities of our peptivator peptide pools cover the most important antigens ranging from, for example, GP100 and melan A to Candida albicans to CMV and EBV antigens, as well as to autoantigens like insulin. On the right side, you can see how efficiently peptivator peptide pools stimulate both CD4 plus and CD8 plus T cells, hereby assessed by interferon gamma expression after stimulation. As said before, peptivator HT provide quality synthetic peptide pools to enable high throughput applications. Assemble your customized assay by simply combining modular antigen specific strips on a single plate. This level of absolute flexibility leaves you in full control of your experimental setup. After the antigen specific T cells have been prepared in whatever context and appropriately stimulated, they will get activated and exhibit the typical surface markers and cytokines we discussed before. However, being so rare, analysis of antigen-specific T-cells is challenging. Hereby, magnetic enrichment via set markers is a very valuable option. Here you see a comparison of enrichment methods based on appropriate markers, namely CD137 and CD154 and the secreted cytokines. 
The list was published 2015 by Bacher et al. in Current Opinions of Pharmacology. CD154 enrichment after 6 hours of stimulation can be utilized to strongly increase the sensitivity of detection for rare cells up to 1 in a million. Using this approach, a broad functional heterogeneity of virus, bacteria or fungi specific CD4 plus T cells was visualized. Demonstrating that many functional relevant cytokines occur only in very low frequencies within the total antigen specific T cell pool, undetectable without prior pre enrichment methods. CD137, after 16 hours of stimulation, on the other hand, is a sensitive tool to enrich both CD4 and CD8 T cells to assess the whole antigen specific T cell response. As also mentioned previously, CD154 and CD137 have been reported to be upregulated on T regulatory cells following short term in vitro antigen stimulation. The kinetics of activation marker expression differ between T Rex and conventional T cells. After 6 hours of stimulation, only T Rex express CD137 whereas conventional T-cells require an over 12 hours of stimulation. Thereby, discrimination of both T-cell populations is possible with those two markers. Enrichment of cytokine secreting cells via cytokine secretion assays. The enrichment of rare cytokine producing T-cells by our cytokine secretion assays allows for the analysis of rare antigen-specific T-cells undetectable via conventional flow cytometry. Depending on the antigen specificity, cytokine-producing CD4 T-cells could be detected down to 1 T-cells within 1 million PBMCs. For example, enrichment of rare interferon gamma-producing cells is also instrumental for clinical adoptive immunotherapy and the clinical cell isolation of rare virus-specific T-cells. In contrast to direct MHC multimere based methods, these approaches enable the detection of rare antigen specific cells with high sensitivity, but without limitations of TCR affinities or restrictions to certain epitopes and could therefore be extended to any antigen of interest. Depending on the specificity and subset in question, different enrichment strategies need and can be applied. After we learned about the different enrichment strategies, let's have a brief look at Miltini's different isolation technologies and their advantages. Generally, the Miltini separation portfolio can be divided into four approaches. Microbeads and microbead kits for the positive selections of cells from PBMCs. Isolation kits for the untouched selections of cells from PBMCs. The new straight from portfolio for positively select cells directly from whole blood and blood products like Buffy Coat, LRSCs and Leukopex. And finally, the Max Express portfolio to isolate untouched cells directly from whole blood and Buffy Coats and LRSC. For the isolation of rare antigen-specific T-cells, however, microbeads, so positive selection, are the best option. Positive enrichment is the cleanest and most efficient way to successful results. But what makes our microbead technology so special? Under the motto, select the best, we describe the advantage of our column technology. Minimal labeling with no effects on cell biology for full downstream compatibility. The column amplifies the magnetic field 10,000 fold. This allows for minimal labeling and smallest bead size. In consequence, less epitopes are covered on the cell surface and less stress is applied on the cells. The column matrix allows for the most gentle sorting since there is a large space between the steel spheres, about 20 times the size of a lymphocyte. And down here you can see the consequences. On the left you see the column free technology with massive overlabeling and bead aggregates on the cell surface. On the right you see max column technology with minimal labeling, smallest bead size 
and an uncovered cell surface. And indeed, the result with our enrichment um, CD154 and CD137 micropickets are striking. PBMCs were stimulated with CMV PP65 peptivators or left untreated and then antigen activated T cells were enriched using, um, using our CD137 and CD154 micropickets kits respectively. Depending on the enrichment method, CD4 for CD154 enriched cells and CD8 for CD137 enriched cells were counterstained. And as expected, hardly any cell expressing one, a CD137 or a CD154 can be found in the unstimulated samples, regardless of the enrichment. After stimulation, however, antigen-specific T cells heavily upregulate their respective markers and can thereby be easily enriched for any downstream analysis. Of course, the T-cell-related cell separation portfolio is not limited to CD137 and CD154, but comprises solutions for the positive and negative isolation of a multitude of additional T-cell subsets. Finally, I want to point out a cell separation product that is absolutely unique, our cytokine secretion assays. They allow to detect and enrich viable cytokine secreting cells from mouse and humans. Cytokines are immobilized on the surface of the secreting cell by the so-called catch reagent. Basically, thereby, the cytokine secreting cell labels itself with its own cytokines. In a second step, the immobilized cytokines on the cell surface are then labeled with fluorophore conjugated antibodies called detection reagent and then can be detected viable without intracellular staining in the flow cytometer. In an optional third step, the fluorophore labeled cytokine secreting cells can be specifically enriched and used in downstream assays by using antifluorophore magnetic beads. Our cytokine secretion assays come in two versions. For flow detection only, we have the detection kits. For detection and enrichment, uh, we have our detection and enrichment kits, which comprise an additional enrichment step via columns and allow for the separation of viable cytokine secreting cells. Please have a look at this example, how nicely antigen-specifically stimulated T-cells can be enriched even from low frequencies, clearly above background levels, solely based on their IL-17 secretion. Cells were stimulated with Candida albicans peptivators for 16 hours or left untreated and then enriched using the IL-17 secretion assay, cell enrichment and detection kit. Now, when gating on the CD4 plus T cells and looking at CD154 expression, it becomes apparent that mainly the CD4 plus, CD154 plus T cells express indeed the IL-17. Now, let's have a look at the analysis of rare antigen-specific T cells. Of course, fluor cytometry is the most widely used method here. However, even an established method like flow cytometry has its limits and challenges. As described by Bacher et al. in Current Opinions of Pharmacology in 2015, despite its high sensitivity, standard flow cytometry is limited by the number of events which can be acquired, typically 1 million cells, as well as the staining background, which is typically between 0.01% and 0.1%. This restricts the analysis of cell populations occurring at frequencies below 0.1%. In absence of an acute infection, frequencies of antigen-specific memory cells are typically in the range of one cell within 100 to 100,000 cells. However, many functionally important T-cell populations occur at much lower frequencies. 
For example, T cell specific for autoantigens, tumor antigens, environmental antigens, or neoantigens are typically below 0.01%. They cannot be accessed without additional measures such as pre-enrichment and most importantly, reduction of background. To keep background during flow analysis to a minimum, specific labeling and bright fluorophores are a prerequisite. The use of reaffinity recombinant antibodies maximizes these efforts by eliminating the need um, for FCR blocking while exhibiting highest purity, specificity and lot-to-lot -lot consistency. Milton's own Viobrite dyes enhance the detection capabilities with their unique technology. So, apart from pre-enrichment, optimized flow analysis is the key to successful rare cell analysis. The most efficient way to reduce background in flow cytomerity is the choice of the right antibody. So, use our reaffinity recombinant antibodies. Being recombinantly engineered, reaffinity antibodies allow complete control over the sequence. Thereby, we mutated the FCR receptor binding site to reduce unspecific background. All rear antibodies have one universal isotope control, IgG1, and are expressed via a respective expression vector in mammalian cells that allow a much cleaner antibody production than with classical hybridomas. The main benefits of rear affinity antibodies, recombinant engineered antibodies are the highest purity and lot to lot consistency for greater reproducibility, no tedious and costly FC receptor blocking steps for lower background, one universal isotype control for convenience and cost savings and hundreds of specificities. Moreover, our antibodies, either reaffinity or classical hybridoma derived antibodies, are available with our own fluorophores, the viodyes. Viodye fluorescent antibody conjugates are bright, meaning superior mean fluorescence intensity for excellent signals distinct, with a high staining index for clear population discrimination, and hassle-free, ideal for multicolor experiments due to low compensation. Combined with the stringent in-house validation, reaffinity antibodies simply yield the superior performance. Now let's have a look at our flow analysis kits for multi-parameter analysis of cytokines and surface marker. MaxPlex assays are designed for determining concentrations of soluble analytes in a single sample. The analysis is based on MaxPlex capture beads, which display defined fluorescence properties and can be identified using standard flow cytometers. In combination with the express modes of the MaxQuant analyzers, however, the MaxPlex cytotime kits are optimized for automated measurement and simplify flow cytotometric analysis via predefined experimental settings, as well as acquisition and analysis templates. The MaxPlex 10 and 12 assays allow the simultaneous analysis of 10 mouse or 12 human cytokines respectively. The new MaxPlex exosome kit and the cytotoxic T-cell and K-cell kit allow the analysis of exosome-containing cell cultures, supernatants, as well as the cytotoxic properties of T and NK cells, respectively. All in all, the MaxPlex assays allow real multiplex assays for secreted cytokines and exosomes using standard flow cytometers. The next flow analysis kits on the list are the rapid cytokine inspectors, rapid multi-parameter analysis of activated CD4 plus and CD8 plus T cells. While the MaxPlex assays allow the analysis of soluble analytes in the supernatant, the rapid cytokine inspectors combine surface marker with cytokine analysis. Thereby, classical T cell markers such as CD3, CD4 and CD8 
as well as exclusion markers such as CD14 and CD20 are combined with an intracellular staining of the cytokine of choice, for example interferon gamma, TNF-alpha, IL-2 or IL-17. The kit con kits contain everything needed, for example brevetidine A and permeabilization reagents for intracellular staining after stimulation and are ideal for the analysis of antigen-specific T-cells with frequencies higher than 0.01% of the total T-cell population. Please note, the anti-cytokine antibodies have to be um, bought separately. Most importantly, the rapid cytokine inspector protocols are the fastest on the market. So let's have a brief look at the rapid cytokine inspector protocol. The protocol is minimized to only 40 minutes hands-on time and all steps can be performed directly on the sample plate. So without washing and cell harvesting, the cell loss is minimized and the speed optimized. Our flow portfolio is rounded off by the MaxQuant Analyzer and Taito Cell Sorter. The MaxQuant Analyzer flow cytometer come in different versions to fulfill specific flow cytometry needs. The MaxQuant Analyzer 10 and 16, a small bench to flow cytometers with 10 and 16 optical parameters respectively. The MaxQuant Analyzer Wipe, optimized for fluid, fruit fluorescent proteins and the MaxQuant Analyzer X for high throughput applications. All MaxQuant Analyzer are fully automated and are thereby fast and easy to use and the integrated pre-enrichment unit allows for unique flow strategies. The MaxQuant Taito Cell Sorter on the other hand revolutionizes cell sorting with its most gentle microchip based cell sorting technology and sterile closed cartridge system. Both systems are ideal for the analysis and sorting of antigen-specific cells due to their unique flow cytometry approaches that are ideal for rare cell analysis. Please find the application note Sorting of Antigen-Specific T-Cells using the MaxQuant Taito on our T-Cell application page. Part 3. Applications and Examples Combining Miltonis products, we offer several optimized solutions for applications involving rare antigen-specific T-cells. On the next couple of slides, we will show examples of scientific data and results on how to use Miltonis products to best efficiency in research. In this example, our efficient antibody surface staining of T-cell activation markers CD69 and CD154 in the combination with the MaxQuant analyzer allow, for example, for the identification of whole CD4 plus T-cell repertoires to research invasive fungal infections from here on called IFI that may present themselves with an elevated level of fungi-specific CD4 plus T-cells. Here we see the analysis of antigen-specific T-cells of IFI patients samples as shown by Bacher et al in AGR-CCM in 2014. As the author state, IFI is an overgrowth or spread of molds like Aspergillus or Mucorales that can cause lethal complications within immunosuppressed patients or after surgery. When and how to treat IFI is still discussed among scientists. Anyhow, early treatment initiation in patients with IFI has a profound impact on mortality rates, but reliable diagnostic measures are lacking. Crucial for an effective treatment is an early diagnosis, so that treatments with, for example, fungicides can be effective without worsening the patient's state. A very early and precise detection method for IFI could be the identification of elevated levels of certain mold-specific T-cells. As you see in these publications, Patient samples were stimulated with Aspergillus and Mucorales peptivators and cells subsequently stained for CD4, CD154 and CD69 expression. Unstimulated cells, without antigens, served as negative control. 
Staphylococcus enterotoxin B as positive control. And indeed, as you can see, patients 10 and 7 showed elevated level of Aspergillus or Mercurialis specific T cells. According to the authors of the respective publication, this might indicate a very early stage of IV. Here we see an example of the users of the rapid cytokine inspector. The rapid cytokine inspector is ideal to monitor antigen specific T cells with frequencies higher than 0.01% of the total T cell population. For lower frequencies, a different special protocol called rapid ARTE is required that we will have a look at some slides later. Applications of the rapid cytokine inspectors include assessment of samples, immune status or testing of leukapheresis material for virus-specific CD4 plus and CD4-8 T cells. Mm. Here you see how the rapid cytokine inspector was compared to standard um, intracellular staining protocols. After the stimulation with CMV peptivators PP65 and IE, frequencies of CMV-specific CD4 and CD8 T cells were analyzed in PBMCs. Thereby, for example, the frequency of virus-specific T cells in leukophoresis products can be assessed. The rapid cytokine inspector is as good as the classical intercellular staining in performance but yields the benefits of a faster protocol and less washing and cell handling. Generally, analysis of antigen activated T cells with fast staining me methods will help to improve processes in quality control of cellular material, immune monitoring, as well as establishing streamlined and fixed proceedings in basic and industrial research. As stated earlier, depending on the antigen in question, some antigen-specific T-cells are even rarer and exhibit a frequency below 0.01% of the total T-cell population. For those very rare cells, the rapid antigen reactive T-cell enrichment, called rapid ARTE protocol, is the ideal solution in regards to CD4 plus T-cells. It cleverly combines cell enrichment with flow analysis in a fast few-step protocol. Applications include identification and enumeration of tumor-specific cells, for example, Wills tumor 1 and tumor papilloma virus 16, discrimination of T-conventional cells and T-regulatory cells, detailed analysis of the complete rare CD4 T-cell repertoire, and cytokine profiling of fixed fungi or tumor-specific T-cells. Rapid RT is similar to the rapid cytokine inspector and combines surface marker staining with intracellular cytokine staining. However, the protocol also includes an enrichment step based on CD154 expression. In this example, as described by Bacher et al., PBMCs were stimulated with Aspergillus lysate for 7 hours, stained for surface markers and cytokines, and enriched based on their CD154 expression. The protocol enriched antigen-specific T cells up to 85 times and thereby facilitated a reliable analysis of Aspergillus reacting T cells. Rapid ARTE is the fastest and easiest solution for the analysis even of the rarest antigen-specific T cells with a frequency below 0.01% of total T cells. Please download our application node Rapid ARTE on our T cell application page. Furthermore, the Rapid ARTE analysis including enrichment, made it then possible to efficiently conduct a cytokine profiling of Aspergillus-stimulated versus Candida-stimulated T-cells to successfully assess that in these both T-cell populations differ in their cytokine profile. For more details, please refer to the publication of Bacher et al. Antigen Reactive T-cell Enrichment for Direct High-Resolution Analysis of Human Naive and Memory TH Cell Repertoire in the Journal of Immunology, published in 2013.
And now to a cancer-related example of rapid RT that shows the efficiency and necessity of the CD154 based enrichment of rare Wilms tumor 1 WT1 specific T cells. The WT1 protein is a transcription factor expressed at high levels in several hematological malignancies and some solid tumors. As a consequence of its oncogenic potential and presumptive immunogenicity, WT1 was ranked top in a list of tumor-associated antigens prioritized for cancer immunotherapy. However, little is known about the naturally occurring WT1-specific T-cell repertoire and its functional relevance in vivo, in part because of the exceedingly low frequency of such cells in healthy donors. This knowledge gap potentially hinders the rational development of an effective WT1-directed T-cell therapy. In this example, 50 million PBMCs were WT1 stimulated, where WT1 reacting cells were enriched via rapid RT and direct flow analysis was performed. Thereby, even the rare WT1 specific CD4 plus T cells could be successfully detected to verify their presence in healthy donors. For more details, please have a look at Schmidt et al.'s publication Analysis of the Functional WT1 Specific T cell Repertoire in Healthy Donors reveals a discrepancy between CD4 plus and CD8 plus memory formation, published in 2015 in Immunology. However, rapid RT is also very flexible and can be adapted by including also CD137 as activation marker. More recently, the important role of antigen-specifically activated T regulatory cells emerged. However, analysis of antigen-specific T regs has presented itself as challenging, as for example a secure discrimination method of antigen-specific T conventional cells and T reg after antigen activation was difficult to apply. Bacher et al. could indeed show that a successful discrimination of antigen-specifically activated T-conventional cells in T-Rex is possible by the time-dependent surface marker expression of CD154 and CD137. In this example, PBMCs were stimulated with Aspergillus fumigatus lysate for six hours. After enrichment based on CD154 and CD137 expression, cells were stained accordingly and then sub subjected to flow analysis. As seen in the dot plot on the right, six hours after fumigato specific activation, T-cons are positive for CD154, whereas T-rex on the other hand are positive for CD137. After this limited time window, both cells types alter their surface expression so that the discrimination is not possible anymore. In this context, rapid RT allows not only to discriminate T-con and T-rex based on their um, CD154 and CD137 expression, for example, for direct flow analysis, but also allows to co-enrich those T-cell subpopulations for deeper analysis. Therefore, the complete antigen-specific CD4 plus T-cell repertoire dividing T-Reg and T-Con can be assessed in a very precise and distinctive manner. Closer analysis of the enriched CD154 and CD137 CD4 T-cells revealed that indeed two distinct T-cell subpopulations were enriched. CD154 plus CD25 negative CD127 plus T-con as well as um, CD137 plus CD25 plus and CD127 negative T regulatory cells. Further in-depth analysis then showed that not only surface markers like CD154, CD25 and CD127 show that T-con and T-rect have been successfully co-enriched and can be discriminated, but also the hallmark T-rect transcription factors FOXP3 and Helios. 
And indeed, intracellular staining shows that TCON are FOXP3 and Helios negative and T-Rex are FOXP3 and Helios positive. Our last application example shows the efficient combination of different technologies. After tetramer staining and antigen-specific stimulation, antigen-activated T-cells can, of course, also be enriched for further in-depth analysis. Antigen-specific CD8 plus T-cells labeled with PE or APC fluorescent MHC class 1 peptide multimers can be enriched using anti-PE or anti-APC microbeads and then be directly analyzed by flow cytometry. Hereby, the enrichment and ex vivo char characterization of rare CD8 plus T cells, for example, naive WT1 specific T cells, is more efficiently possible. In this example, published by Schmidt et al. in Immunology in 2014, PBMCs were stained with WT1 tetramers with APC and PE fluorescence. Anti-PE microbeads were then used to specifically enrich the antigen-specific CD8 plus 8 T cells. The experiment in detail. To investigate the ex vivo phenotype of WT1 specific CD8 plus T cells, magnetic enrichment of WT1 tetramere positive cells was performed directly from HLA2 um, healthy donors derived PBMCs. Two internal control mechanisms were employed to eliminate non-specific background staining. First, dual labeling was performed with the WT1 tetramere conjugated to PE and to APC. Enrichment then was performed using anti-PE microbeads and only double positive events were recorded as antigen specific. Second, concomitant staining of CD4 plus T cells was used as a reference standard. The vast majority of these WT1-specific CD8 plus T cells displayed a naive CD45 RA plus CCR7 plus phenotype. In conclusion, the majority of WT1-specific CD8 plus T cells detected in healthy donors emanate from the naive pool. For the experiments where CD4 and CD8 T cells were compared after CD137 was used as enrichment target from various memory subpopulations, showed that there is indeed a phenotypic disparity between CD4 plus and CD8 plus WT1 specific T cells. For further details, please have a look at the publication Analysis of the Functional WT1 specific T cell Repertoire in Healthy Donors Reveals a Discrepancy Between CD4 plus and CD8 plus Memory Formation by Schmidt et al. published in Immunology in the year 2014. So this was our last application example. To sum up, most important are two things. The key to rare cell analysis is no cell loss, pre-enrichment and low background. And Milton offers a complete workflow for the work with antigen-specific T cells. This means optimal sample preparation with the gentle max dissociate and kits, potent T cell stimulation with peptivator peptide pools, efficient pre enrichment solutions with CD137 and CD154 microbit kits, low background flow staining with reaffinity recombinant antibodies, multi parameter surface marker and cytokine analysis kits with the maxplex and rapid cytokine inspector and automated flow analysis and high-end cell sorting with the MaxPant analyzer and tie to cell sorter. Last but not least, for more hands-on training, please visit www.miltonybiotech.com backslash hands-on and register for our flow seminar analyzing antigen-specific T-cells extra and intracellularly in Germany and the US. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope you enjoyed the presentation about Milton Biotech solutions for the analysis of antigen-specific T-cells.